So, welcome again uh, in, in my course power electronics application in power system. In the last two lectures, uh, I, I taught you the basic concepts of active and reactive power of single phase as well as three phase circuits and uh, the, the concept of reactive power compensation. Also, I discuss the significance of reactive power compensation. Okay. So, in this lecture, I, I will start uh, uh, teaching the basic uh, mathematical moduling of power transmission lines, which is very essential to learn in order to understand the uh, applications of different types of power electronic compensators uh, for reactive power compensation in a, a power system. So, let us proceed. Okay. So, today's lecture is all about transmission line modeling. Okay. So, the goal of this lecture is number one, the review of concepts of power transmission systems. Number two is mathematical modeling of long transmission lines. Okay. So, these are the goals. So, the concepts of power transmission system is already taught in uh, basic power system course, which is one of the prerequisites for this course. And uh, this mathematical modeling of this power transmission lines, in particular long transmission line is, a, is an essential uh, part to understand the further uh, uh, derivation of uh, this uh, compensator modeling and compensator applications. Okay. So, I will go uh, uh, in very slow space so that it is understandable to all the learners. So, first of all, what is the purpose of transmission line? purpose of transmission line in electrical in, uh, power system is to evacuate power from the generating station to the load centers to evacuate power from generating stations to the load centers. Okay. So, uh, this transmission line act as a uh, transmission medium of power to bring power towards the load center. Uh, load center stands for uh, where uh, the, the localities where the customers live. Okay. And in general, uh, the in India, uh, these generating stations uh, stands for this thermal power generating stations. Although uh, we have a uh, uh, considerable share of renewable nowadays, but major amount of power, more more than 60% of power, is coming from the conventional thermal power stations. 
and these thermal power stations are usually located far away from the cities or localities where customer live. So, therefore, to, to uh, bring power from those generating station to the cities, localities uh, where the customers live, where we have the industries also, uh, we need long, long transmission line. And in, in India, we have several hundred uh, thousand kilometers of uh, uh, the, uh, transmission lines, okay. uh, in primarily uh, three different voltage levels. 220 kb 765 kb and 400 kb okay this is i this is i am talking about ac transmission lines okay now second thing that i will discuss that the parameters of transmission lines So, there are three important parameters in a typical transmission line, one is number one is line resistance, number two is line inductance or inductive reactance and number three is capacitances. So, this R that is resistance, inductance and capacitance are three linear uh, circuit elements that is well known by uh, whom who have already uh, taught this, uh, uh, who have been already taught this uh, uh, basic electrical engineering. Right. So, here also in uh, power transmission lines, we have three important parameters. One is line resistance because these lines are usually constructed of uh, this aluminum or its alloy uh, this uh, iron. So, it, these have some uh, finite resistance and due to this uh, line spacing, there is some inductance uh, and also line is having some sort of capacitance. Now, when you talk about this transmission line models, these models essentially consist of these three important parameters, line resistance, line inductance and line capacitance. Another important thing is that this, these parameters, uh, these parameters are usually uh, distributed in nature. So, uh, there are different types of uh, transmission line models considering that uh, different uh, you know types of considerations of these parameters uh, uh, for simplicity and uh, without uh, uh, without uh, sacrificing the essential or important concept uh, we have three different types of transmission lines so let us right types of transmission line models okay so if i consider this line resistance is represented by r line inductance is represented by l line capacitance is represented by c so how this uh, uh, whether these three different parameters have been considered or not based upon that and whether how the consideration is whether we, these parameters are considered to be lumped or distributed based upon that we have three different transmission line models okay these models are number one short line model number 2 medium line model number 3 
long line model. Okay. Now, what is the basis of this these three models? Uh, of course, the line length is one of the basis of this uh, categorization of these three different models. So, line uh, transmission line length is an important parameter based upon which we can categorize which type of uh, line, uh, which type of model we will be using to uh, mathematically model that particular transmission line. So, based upon the short uh, this line length, this short transmission line is usually classified those line which are below this 80 kilometer length. So, if line length is uh, below this 80 kilometer, we will consider it is a short transmission line model. This 80 kilometer is uh, basically equal to somewhat 50 mile. Okay. So, any, any line which is whose length is below this 80 kilometer is categorized in short transmission line model. In this model, we only consider this line resistance and line inductance and we ignore the capacitance. Okay. Why we ignore this line capacitance? Because it has been seen that the total uh, line uh, capacitive VAR generation is not significantly high when line length is below 80 kilometer. So, that is why capacitance is neglected, neglected. So, this makes overall model is simpler. And another important thing is that this R and L are considered to be lumped. Okay. So, this is a kind of lump modeling, although you, are, you should understand at this point that this line uh, when we have a uh, long transmission line, this line resistance is not concentrated at a particular point. Okay. So, we cannot consider the whole resistance like a single resistance. So, it is a distributed in space. Uh, okay. So, if we ignore that distribution and consider that the whole resistance to be concentrated to be lumped at a particular point, then we then it is a called lump parameter representation and for short line model we consider lump representation because we do not lose uh, any any important uh, concept by considering the lump parameter over here okay for medium line model we consider all these three parameter r l and c but we consider them to be lumped again Okay. So, that is the difference between this medium line model to short line model. Now, to whom we will classify as the medium line model when a line length is higher than uh, 80 kilometer, but lower than 240 kilometer. 80 kilometer, but lower than 240 kilometer. Okay. So, 240 kilometer is somewhat uh, similar to 150 mile I believe, okay. uh, 150 mile. So, when we have this uh, line length uh, in between this 80 kilometer to 240 kilometer, we categorize this transmission line to be medium transmission line. Okay. In medium transmission line model, uh, we consider all these three parameters that is R, L and C resistance, line inductance, line capacitance and they are considered to be lumped. Okay. So, the third model that is long transmission line model uh, are those models whose length is usually higher than 240 kilometer or 150 mile. Okay. So, here we also consider all these three parameters R, L and C and we consider these parameters to be distributed in space. That is the difference between this medium line model and the long line model. So, we consider this line parameters to be distributed in space 
in long line model right and in this lecture uh, I will basically discuss this long line model because the short and medium line models are simpler and one can easily uh, study from this basic power system course right. So, we will directly discuss this long transmission line model in this particular lecture. long transmission line model. So, the difference of this, this uh, long transmission line and the medium transmission line as I have pointed out in the last uh, slide that uh, in, in medium transmission line we consider parameters to be uh, concentrated at a particular point or they are considered to be lumped whereas, in long transmission line we consider them to be distributed. Now, the question is when the line length is less somewhat uh, uh, lesser than this 240 kilometer or so, then uh, if we consider that lumped parameter model, we generally do not sacrifice much of accuracy in modeling. However, when we go for this um, uh, long transmission line um, uh, where your length is more than 240 kilometer and above, we need to consider the parameters to be distributed. Now, what we will gain when we consider these parameters to be distributed in long transmission mod line model? This also I will discuss uh, in due course. Okay. So, in long transmission line model, let us consider that this circuit is like this. We have a sending end site, this one is sending end site and we represent this uh, circuital model uh, with a pi section okay, like this. Okay. Now, this is whatever this uh, diagram I am going to draw right now, it is basically a single phase representation or single line representation of a three phase transmission line. I hope that in uh, this basic power system course one get an idea that uh, what is single line model is. Okay. So, uh, a single line model is a uh, equivalent one line representation of a three phase transmission line. So, what uh, circuit I am going to draw is, is a single line diagram. Okay. Single line diagram is a very uh, you know uh, common terminology used in power system. Okay. So, this is sending end pi section, then we consider that we have a long transmission line and somewhere there is one particular pi section we considered in the middle. These dotted lines are not discontinuity, rather they represent that we have infinite number of such pi section to, to represent from sending end to this, uh, this length. Then we all, will also represent another pi section at the receiving end side like this. and then we have this receiving end parameter here. So, now this, this is basically sending end side of the line and this is basically receiving end side of the line. Okay. The parameters in the sending end uh, named as sending end parameter. So, the voltage across these two terminal is V s. Here V is the voltage across these two terminal, this terminal and that terminal and uh, V s stands for sending end. Okay. And the current flowing through here is represented 
i s or I should not give a direction over here, it can be uh, the direction can be erased over here. So, it can be any direction, okay. but whatever current is uh, you are measuring at the sending end side that is I s. Similarly, in receiving end side the voltage across these two terminal let us termed as V r and the current here let us termed as I r. Okay, where V s is sending and voltage voltage I s is sending end current V r is receiving end voltage I r is receiving end current. Okay. And let us consider this line length is L, it could be L kilometer or it could be L meter as well. Okay. Now, you should understand uh, looking at this single line diagram is uh, this this uh, uh, this long transmission line is usually modeled with infinite number of such pi sections. Okay. Now, what this pi section is representing I am coming to that. Okay. Now, this this long transmission line is representing a infinite number of pi sections from sending end to receiving end. Right. Now, this rectangular box which is in series in the pi section is termed as series parameters. Okay. And this rectangular box two boxes in the two sides of the series parameters are representing shunt parameters. Okay. All right. Now, what do you mean by series parameters of a typical transmission line? A series parameter of a typical transmission line uh, represents this line resistance and line inductance. Okay. So, this series parameter is representing line resistance and inductance in short uh, together we call it line impedance. Okay. So, for a small pi section let us say that impedance of this series parameter is represented by small z, where small z is representing small z is representing series parameters per unit length. Now, suppose this line if this line is of 1000 kilometer and if you consider that line to be modeled with 1000 such pi section, then each pi section will have uh, this, this series parameter representation with uh, that much of uh, uh, that much magnitude of series impedance per length. So, usually it is its unit is ohm per kilometer or ohm per meter. Okay. Similarly, these sun parameters are represented by small y okay. and we write sun's parameter is represented by small y parameters per unit length is represented by small y since they are in sun. So, we call, call consider this y is, is a admittance uh, of the line and it is represented by this uh, mo per kilometer or something like that. All right. Now, what we will do is uh, we, we, need, we need to understand that what difference we will get uh, from this distributed representation of this transmission line parameters 
in comparison with the LAMP parameters model that is short and uh, medium line model I discuss. Okay. So, when we have such a distributed parameter model, so you should understand that when you are energizing this, this uh, one end with a voltage source. So, what is actually happening this, this small pi sections what we have considered suppose per kilometer we considered one pi section they are sequentially to be energized okay? and then energy will take some finite amount of time to reach from sending end to receiving end. Okay? So, that travel time might be in nanosecond, might be in microsecond or very low, but that cannot be 0. Okay? So, this information you will never get if you model it in uh, land parameter. Okay? This is one thing. Another important thing is that uh, this voltage uh, whatever we am talking about. So, this voltage we have usually considered time varying voltage. But this voltage will getting change over every each and every point of the line starting from sending end to receiving end. So, this voltage will have some uh, space dependency, okay? some space dependency. Okay? Those things you will never get if you model this transmission line uh, as a LAMP parameter model. Okay? Now, in order to derive the mathematical modeling of this long transmission line, what we will do is we will consider that from the receiving end at a distance of x meter or x kilometer, let us take a infinitely small length of the line whose length is represented by del x, okay? whose length is represented by del x. Now, as I said this series parameters, uh, series parameter is representing the series impedance per unit length. So, what would be the impedance that we will see in this particular box? It will be small z times del x because z is uh, representing ohm per uh, this unit length and the length of this small section we consider del x. Right? Similarly, here also we will consider this is y del x and this is also y del x. Okay. Also, what we will consider that at this particular point, what is that particular point? This particular point is x uh, kilometer or x meter away from the receiving end and we consider that voltage at this point is V x. Okay. And obviously, since this line is of del x, so, this voltage at the other end of this uh, pi section would be considered as V x plus del x. Okay? And current flowing through this is suppose considered to be I x, I x representing the current flowing through the infinitely small pi section that we considered which is located uh, x kilometer or x meter away from the receiving end side. Now, we will analyze this uh, pi section. Okay? So, with this analysis, what we will do? We will apply KVL inside the, uh, this, this inside the loop of the small pi section that we consider, infinitely small pi section that we consider that is in this particular loop. If we apply this uh, KVL in this particular loop, then you can see the difference of this voltage Vx plus del x and this voltage that is Vx is due to the uh, voltage drop at the series parameter. Okay? So, I can write by applying KVL what we get? We get this equation that is V x plus del x minus this drop that is minus I x z del x is equal to the voltage at the other end of the pi section that is V x. Right? So, this is the equation we get by using by applying KVL inside the uh, loop of the 
this uh, infinitely small pi section which we consider which is located x kilometer or x meter away from the receiving end site, right. Now, what we will do is we will simplify this. So, so this is so we get V x plus del x minus V x is equal to uh, if I uh, put this i x z del x to the other hand si other side that is right hand side and uh, divide del x with both the side then I will get this equation. All right, I will get this equation. Okay. Now, you remember that we, call, we, we consider this del x to be infinitely small. So, I can write this del x stand, tends to 0, limit del x tends to 0, both the side. So, what we will get is, here this will represent d v x d x that is derivative of v x is equal to z i x. This is one equation I get. Okay. Now, what we will do uh, that uh, for basic electrical engineering you know that we can apply or we can solve any any electrical engineering problem either by applying KVL that is Kirchhoff's voltage law or by uh, applying KCL that is Kirchhoff's current law. Okay. So, what we will do is that uh, now we will apply Kirchhoff's current law. Okay. So, to apply Kirchhoff's current law you know that we consider the current flowing through this pi section is I x. So, current in this side would be I x plus del x, right. So, we will apply KCL at this particular node, you look at my cursor, at this particular node we will apply KCL. So, by applying KCL we get. So, here you can see uh, this is incoming current to this particular uh, small infinitely small pi section uh, this is the incoming current I x plus del x and this is the outgoing current that is I x. So, the difference of these two that is I x plus del x minus i x. So, difference of these two would be the current drawn by this sun parameter that is this current. Okay. What is that current? That current will be this this admittance multiplied by this voltage at this particular node. So, therefore, this would be equal to y del x multiplied by v x plus del x. Okay. Now, we will also simplify this equation. So, we will divide both sides with del x. So, what we will get? Let us see that is i x plus del x minus i x divided by del x is equal to y v x plus del x. Okay. Now, again we since already we have considered that this del x is a infinitely small section pi section uh, of this transmission line. So, we will again apply this limit del x tends to 0, del x tends to 0. Then what we will get here also this left hand side we will get this is a derivative of this i x. and right hand side what we will get this is y of v x already if we put del x tends to 0. So, this will be eliminated and we will get this another equation. 
so this is suppose our first equation then this will be our second equation right now we need to solve this differential equation in order to solve this differential equation what we will do we will uh, further differentiate this uh, vx ok then we will see so from 1 what we will get we will get this is basically dvx is equal to z of ix that we already have seen or derived. Now, what we will do is we will differentiate. So, from this we will get d 2 v x d x 2 differentiating further both side is equal to z d i x d x right. So, this is we get uh, further differentiating this uh, this this equation that is from 1 uh, in both side we are differentiating with respect to x we will get this equation ok. Now, let us see that uh, we know that uh, our second equation is that is d i x d x is equal to y v x. So, uh, if I put this to this equation, so from 2 what we will get is d 2 v x d x 2 I am just replacing this d i d x from this equation 2. So, what we will get this will be equal to z y v x right. So, I just replacing this d y d x d y d x from the previous equation this d y d x from the equation 2. I am just replacing this to over here and I will get this equation right. Now, let us consider let consider this small z y is a parameter which is gamma square ok. Now, what is that gamma I will come to that ok. So, what we will get from this we will replace this z y with gamma square and we will get this equation is equal to 0. So, this is the main differential equation that we are trying to derive ok. Now, we need to solve this equation to find out uh, what is the expression of v x. Now, what is basically v x? v x is the voltage at the point uh, this this particular point if you look at my cursor at this particular point which is located x kilometer or x meter away from the receiving end ok. So, by solving this equation solving suppose if, if I consider that is equation 3 by solving equation 3 what we get? We get this expression of v x. Now, what would be the expression of v x? v x will be some arbitrary constant c 1 multiplied by e to the power gamma x plus some arbitrary constant c 2 multiplied by e to the power minus gamma x. This is the solution of this. Okay. This is the solution of this where, where C 1 and C 2 are two arbitrary constants and we will derive the uh, expression of this C 1 C 2 through boundary condition later on ok, but this is the expression we get. Now, from this expression can we find out this 
uh, this this current expression as well that is i x as well yes we can find okay because we we know that this v x and i x they are related to each other uh, from this equation 1 and 2. So, what you can see from this equation 1 I can write i x is equal to i x is equal to 1 upon z d v x d x. So, already we get this v x we can differentiate it. So, if we differentiate this then what we will get is this will be C 1 gamma e to the power gamma x plus C 2 minus gamma. So, so this plus will be changed to negative. So, C 2 gamma e to the power minus gamma x. Okay. Now, since gamma are common in both the terms, so I will bring it outside. So, this is gamma divided by z multiplied by C 1 e to the power gamma x minus C 2 e to the power minus gamma x. Okay. Now, as we know this gamma square we already considered that is z y. So, we can write here gamma is equal to root over z y. Okay. Now, if it is so then gamma by z will be equal to root over z y divided by z square. So, this z is z becomes square inside the square root. So, it will be equal to root over y by z. Now, root over z by y we will consider another parameter. Let this is considered another parameter that is called z c. What is the significance of that? I will come to later on, but uh, let us consider this. So, that I can write then that i x is equal to 1 upon z c c 1 e to the power gamma x minus c 2 e to the power minus gamma x. Okay. So, this is another equation we get. Okay. Now, as I said the c 1, c 2 are two arbitrary constants. So, we need to solve this, uh, we need to derive this uh, c 1, c 2. Uh, the expression of C 1, C 2 by using some boundary conditions. Okay. Now, what would be the boundary condition that we could apply over here? Let us go back and see the single line diagram of this circuit once again. So, you can see the, the circuit when uh, this x basically x is considered to be a measurement uh, starting from the receiving end. So, x can vary from 0 to L. So, when x is equal to 0, then basically that v x is equal to v r and i r and when x is equal to L, uh, v x will, will be v s and i x will be i L. So, what I can write over here that this boundary conditions, that when x is equal to 0, v x is equal to v r, i x is equal to i r. And when x is equal to L, that is the line length, v x is equal to v s, i x is equal to i s. Right? So, we will apply this boundary out of this two one boundary condition we will apply this boundary condition. So, we know that at uh, this v x with x is equal to 0 is equal to v r and i x with x is equal to 0 is equal to i r. 
will put over there. So, what we will get? This is equation 4. and this is equation 5. So, what we will do is we will apply this boundary condition in this uh, equation 4 and 5. So, what we will get is from equation 4 we will get that V x when x is equal to 0 is equal to V r. So, V r is equal to. So, since I put this x is equal to 0, so e to the power gamma x will be 1. So, this is C 1 and this will be C 2. Okay. So, this is I applied this boundary condition in this particular equation 4. Similarly, we will apply this boundary condition again in this equation that is equation 5. So, what we will get? We will get I r is equal to 1 upon Z C C 1 minus C 2. Now, we will have another two sets of equation that is equation 6 and equation 7. We can solve these two equation to find out the expressions of uh, C 1 and C 2 easily. So, let us do this again. So, what we will get from this equation 6, 7 that we will get C 1 plus C 2 is equal to is equal to V r. and C 1 minus C 2 is equal to uh, from this uh, equation 7, from this equation 7 if we multiply Z C to that side left hand side. So, I get C 1 minus C 2 is equal to I R multiplied by Z C. So, this is I R multiplied by Z C. Okay. Now, we will solve this we will solve this basically this is an easy to solve this uh, uh, two, two variable algebraic equation. So, what we will get by solving this that C 1 will be equal to if we add this together then what we will get C 1 will be equal to V r plus I r Z C divided by 2 because if you add these two equations together then 2 C 1 will be in left hand side. So, right hand side will be V r plus I r Z C. So, uh, C 1 will be this and C 2 will be equal to V r minus I r Z C divided by 2. Now, we, we already got this expression for C 1 and C 2 and what we will do? We will put this in this particular equation that is equation 4 and equation 5. So, from equation 4 what we will get? From equation 4 what we will get? V x is equal to C 1 that is V r plus I r Z C divided by 2 e to the power gamma x plus V r minus I r Z c divided by 2 e to the power minus gamma x. Okay. So, from this I can further simplify because this here we have V r term, here also we have V r term. Let us consider that V r as a common and then we can write this as a e to the power gamma x and this as a plus e to the power minus gamma x divided by 2 plus this I r Z c will take a common. So, what we will get? Here we will get e to the power gamma x. Here we will get minus e to the power minus gamma x divided by 2. Okay. So, this is we got. Now, we will uh, write this e to the power gamma x plus e to the power minus gamma x by 2 as cosine hyperbolic gamma x plus e to the power 
plus this we know that e to the power gamma x minus e to the power minus gamma x by 2 can be written as sin hyperbolic gamma x ok. So, that is what our V x is. Okay. So, this, this is another equation we get. So, in continuation to this we will write that is equation 8. Okay. So, previously we had uh, seventh equation, so this is eight. Okay, so similarly, similarly, uh, we'll also put this uh, C one C two expression over here in this equation five. So what we'll get is this will be equal to one upon. So I x will be equal to one upon z c i 1 upon z c multiplied by c 1 e to the power gamma x that is c 1 is this v r plus i r z c divided by 2 e to the power gamma x minus this I put inside a bracket minus this v r this is c 2 that is v r minus i r z c divided by 2 e to the power minus gamma x. Okay. So, again we will do similar simplification. So, what we will get 1 upon z c. So, we uh, just separate this v r and uh, i r z c. Uh, like this. So, if we separate V r, so what we will get this V r uh, multiplied by e to the power gamma x minus e to the power minus gamma x divided by 2 minus or plus this i r z c multiplication of e to the power gamma x this minus and that minus will be plus e to the power minus gamma x divided by 2. So, what we can write this as a 1 upon z c v r this is sin hyperbolic gamma x and this is cos cos hyperbolic gamma x. Now, we can further simplify this. We can further simplify this as a v r divided by z c sin hyperbolic gamma x plus this i r this z c and that z c will be cancelled out. So, this will be equal to i r cosine hyperbolic gamma x this is what the expression of i x we derived. So, this is our equation 9. So, now we will come up to the expressions of this V x and I x. What are this, uh, this V x I s stand for? Go back and look at you see that uh, this V x and I x are the voltage and the current at this particular point. What is that point? This point is basically the point which is located x kilometer or x meter or x distance uh, away from the receiving end side of the transmission line and we derive the expression of this voltage uh, V x and I x. Okay. So, with this uh, voltages, uh, with this voltage expression, uh, 
uh, we, we will do further simplification and further derivation uh, to derive the power flow uh, at the point of uh, this x also we will derive the power flow at the sending end and receiving end side and uh, this will be part of the uh, study of the next lecture. Okay. So, up to this today, thank you for your attention.